Dr. Villanueva, and um, we've now looked at kind of the idea of colored spaces, segregation, how it works in, um, and, and how it changes in uh, rural towns in Minnesota and in, uh, in the city of Minnesota. Now, I'm going to do a little bit about an overview of Minnesota gen in general, and also uh, policies and uh, policies Government, governmental and, re, and actually party policies uh, that, that are going to affect immigrants, um, taking into consideration the uh, 2010 10, <coughs> excuse me, I'm cold, census. <coughs> so, so looking at the census overall, what we're looking at in Minnesota and the whole country um, is that the younger people, the children in, in, in over, and this is, this is a graph about the country as a whole that shows um, that among children, you have um, a, a, a growing number of Latino students, uh, of Latino children who are gonna be students in our schools. Um, also a growing number of Asian, uh, some, somewhat of fewer black, but, but uh, uh, depending on Minnesota, actually there's a growth in the black population. Um, and also, and, and a very much a declining number of children uh, who are white in the country overall. Among Latinos, um, they are about half the growth of the U.S. population over the last 10 years, according to the census. Half the entire growth of the U.S. population uh, in the country is Latino. Um, and that growth rate was about uh, about a quarter, about 24 percent, compared to an overall growth rate of the United States of about six percent. So again, um, not it's not only about immigration, but immigration and and the main reason for the growth in the uh, people of color in the United States is being a younger age group and therefore having more children because of, of the age that the white population. Uh, is small numbers, fewer children, and also getting older compared to uh, immigrants and people of color in general who are younger and therefore a larger uh, growing part of the U.S. population overall. So, so what does the census show uh, about Minnesota? And we looked at some charts with uh, Chooks, we looked at charts, and I want to look at some um, <coughs> maps. <coughs> based on the census, because then you can see, again, the spaces where people are and, and what, the, what the changes are uh, across different spaces. Let's go. I have to go yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of it. It's very, I think I'm so impressed with technology that all of you students, if you want to really impress your professors at the end of the semester in your reports, you can already look at state by state within Minnesota or the entire country, these interactive maps that will give you lots of information uh, from the census that was just done a few months ago. It used to take you know a year or two to get the data all together, and now we already have it. Uh, it's being put out very quickly. Um, and put in this very graphic form when you can see what's going on. So this is Minnesota as a whole, uh, which shows that the white population is uh, about 85% of Minnesota, um, which, is, uh, which is still uh, a, a basically more, much more white state than other states. For example, California is about 45%, and, and also um, Texas, though the, both of those states are about 45% white population. Uh, compared to Minnesota, that's about 85%. Um, but again, it's becoming much more diverse than um, ever before in Minnesota history uh, since the American Indians were <laughs> the main population. Um, the, yeah. yeah the, on the right, uh, the right hand side here, you see the changes over just the past 10 years. And, and all the changes, what they've been, if you've been listening to the news reports at all, um, all, the, all the changes, uh, the, the demographics show that, that their Latinos and other people of color have, ex, 
are much greater number and increasing much more rapidly than any former projections, and more than what the Census Bureau or state, local state dem demographers thought uh, over the last few years. <coughs> so in Minnesota, you see the Hispanic Latino population being almost 5% of our population overall and having changed and uh, increased by 74%. So nationwide, Latinos have increased by about a quarter, 24% in Minnesota, they've increased by 74%. Um, while the population, which is not Latino or Hispanic, has, has uh, changed by about 6% in Minnesota. And you can also look at that map and see, um, and if any of you want these links, and, and just mark, mark it, be in a way to get in touch with me, I can send you the link to the, to the maps if you want to do this for homework or for a class report. Uh, and they're quite, as you see, this is the, the website actually, www.demographystate.mnus means this is a uh, state of Minnesota data that's online. So now I want to look briefly at some of the policies and proposals uh, from our um, legislature and also from the policies that the new governor, Governor Dayton, has been looking at. Uh, so I want to, and I want to compare some of the projected policies or proposed policies in regards um, in regards to immigrants and Latinos in particular um, by by the different um, uh, parties here in the state. <laughs> this is also available online. It's the GOP Republican platform. This isn't. Um, this is the basic principles in regards to immigration upon which they are working. It isn't their specific um, the laws that they they are trying to pass at any particular time. It's their overall policies within their platform. So what they say that they support in regards to immigrants. Um, and in regards, in particular, when they think of immigration, they mostly think about protecting borders. That, that's the only actual reference to immigration within the Republican GOP platform. Uh, increase border patrol and complete the border fence. Um, have deportations increase and continue. Um, have background checks before issuing visas. Of course, that would affect all. Uh, immigrants to be more strict about background checks when people try to get um, residence visas, working visas, and so forth. Uh, and the most amazing, I think, part, one of the more amazing parts to me is making English the official language in Minnesota and the U.S. Uh, Chooks pointed out that for cases like mobile home residents, uh, ch children in school, generally speaking, many social services and public services do provide some kind of uh, assistance with language and, and at the federal level uh, there's many laws about requiring uh, schools for example or hospitals to provide assistance and inter interpreters in another language. This, if this was carried uh, uh, through at the state level this would uh, change all the policies in our schools and our hospitals and everything it says making English the official language and all state forms should be in English only. So in other words the heck with the families that don't <laughs> know how to speak English. Uh, we just, they just better learn English immediately. Um, and then these are the things that, according to the uh, TLP platform, in regards to immigrants, uh, they are against. They are against access to society, generally speaking, employment, public benefits, which, uh, which again, immigrants can receive public benefits, but undocumented workers receive no so this is saying we don't want them to receive something they can already not receive. Uh, scholarships, subsidies, driver's licenses, ID cards. And this is interesting because this is a federal issue right here. Taxpayer identification numbers, those are provided by the IRS, all of the country that people who are not documented can uh, pay their taxes and do pay their taxes. And here in Minnesota and across the country to, can get um, ID numbers to pay your taxes, so they're saying they don't want immigrants who don't have proper papers put together yet um, to be able to pay their taxes. Uh, and then uh, they're against amnesty, any program that will allow illegal 
at least to remain in the United States, is estimated about 12 million or more people who are at this point undocumented. In other words, they would like to deport 12 million people. Um, and many of whom have children who are US citizens. So they would also like to change uh, at the state level, the Constitution, the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, equal protection under the law, and what we call birthright citizenship, um, which has been part of the United States since the um, since 1868. Uh, they're saying children born to illegal aliens inside the United States should not automatically obtain citizenship, um, and that again is unconstitutional. Uh, at this point in time and not likely to change because you'd have to have a whole constitutional amendment change which is very difficult and would not happen. Um, the one interesting thing is that they do, they really don't want to participate in the Real ID Act which means that companies would actually have to check everybody's social security number and ID and so forth. They're not, they're not asking for that <laughs> because the companies don't really want to do that, you know, Golden Plum. You know. Not to mention any particular companies, but any, any of the companies we've been talking about in agriculture, um, the Republicans don't actually want them to have to do anything to enforce any of the laws that they seem to want to see passed. Um, okay, so just to mention briefly one of the states where some of these things have, this kind of platform was actually carried out and put into effect uh, has been Arizona. And what's happening in Arizona and um, has been a tremendous effect on the economy, especially from boycotts, um, economic boycotts, tourist boycotts, and so forth, so that a whole number of states, as you see up here, who have proposed laws, like in Arizona, proposed laws that would follow this GOP Minnesota platform um, are, fi are finding that because for economic reasons they are not going to after all, passed those laws, and they've, they've, um, they just had not gone through state legislatures. So what I'm trying to say in general is that what the GOP is proposing in regards to immigration, especially undocumented workers, um, is that we follow the example of Minnesota, uh, of Arizona, which many, many other states in the country are now saying they will not follow because it's uh, economically disastrous. Uh, this is a report, and a reference to a report from the, just this year, Dr. Raul Inojosa Ojeda, who works with the UCLA. <laughs> He's a uh, <coughs> policy analysis and now analyst. Uh, he said he made a report just recently, you can also find online, um, that shows that the Arizona law would have a devastating economic uh, consequences if its goals were accomplished. When undocumented workers are taken out of the economy, the jobs they support through their labor consumption and tax payments, and in Minnesota also, uh, immigrants, uh, whether documented or not, are opening a uh, record number of businesses here, small businesses all over the state, uh, many of them coming from, from immigrants. So again, um, what, what we're seeing is that carrying out these kinds of policies that, that seem to um, be much, very much against um, Im immigration, but especially immigration for people who are undocumented, which is um, a large number, probably several million Latinos, um, is, not doing, is not doing well and has not um, been helpful for the, the economy of places like Arizona where it's carried out. So again, I want to look a little bit at some of what you can find when you want to look at the census and then think in terms of what the policies are and, and then briefly talk about some uh, more favorable uh, policies that do take into consideration the increasing uh, diversity of our state. But think about that diversity in a positive way. One of the, Minnesota and many other states uh, in the Midwest are, uh, are aging. The population in the states are aging. Therefore, the young people you know, your generation and the ch children who are now, uh, those children who, who um, among whom are increasingly children of color and Latinos, um, th those children are the ones that are going to be supporting 